you are going to be accused of having aimbot just like I have been thousands and thousands of times because this is the ultimate guide to have the best aim in the game. Today you will master every single skill and drill needed to have the perfect crispy aim. And this is not just for Call of Duty. Whatever shooting game you decide to play, the skills that you will master today will transfer over as well. You will learn about the six main pillars of aiming. Centering, recoil control, tracking, flicking, and the best settings for controller or mouse and keyboard, and a neglected but highly important last pillar. One important thing that you guys need to keep in your mind is that the journey to becoming the best player is not just about having a good aim. It starts there, but there's also movement and decision making, and then having the ability to combine all of these skills and use them at the same time while playing the game. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel because we will be covering all of these topics and more pretty soon. Starting off with centering. Centering is the art of making sure your crosshair is aligned both vertically and horizontally so that you have your sight on your enemy without trying or having to do a minimal amount of correction because you are already aiming near the target. A lot of the times you're going to hear about streamers being accused of having wall hacks because they managed to land their crosshair exactly where the enemy was even when they didn't have any info that helped them to do so. I'm not saying this to say that they are cheating or not. That's not the point. What I'm trying to explain is that once you have good centering, you are naturally going to have suspicious moments and aim just like them. Now follow these four steps to achieve perfect centering. Step one, vertical centering. Go to your settings and make sure you have the center dot turned on and make sure that it's not on static. Although it looks clean while static is on, it's not actually where the weapon is aiming as you can see when I turn that off. And if you want, while you're training, you can enlarge the dot to make sure that it's easier for you to know where to center. But as you go back to the match, make sure that you turn it off because this could block major info for you in the game. And now watch your own gameplay. If you are aiming towards the ground most of the time or shooting people in the legs, this is the first bad habit that you need to change. Fix that by hopping into a custom multiplayer match or plunder if you don't have multiplayer and then simply walk around while focusing on aiming up and keeping your crosshair at somewhere around the chest area. I usually like to do this while drinking a coffee and listening to music since I'm not shooting at anybody yet. Do this for 5 minutes each day and then progress by adding bots into multiplayer or fighting people in plunder while making sure that you are aiming at where the chest should be and nothing else. Now two extremely important things for you guys. Number one, whatever exercise or drill you are working on from this guide, focus on the purpose of that exercise and only that. So if you are practicing on centering, focus on whatever you should be doing and do not be concerned about the kills. Do not be concerned about the wins. Those will come naturally. For now, you're building the good habits and only that. The second thing is there's only one thing that's more important than understanding a skill and practicing it, which is consistency. Because like I said, building good habits. And for that to happen, you can't just practice it once and say, that's it, now I have aimbot. You need to consistently work on it every day or couple of days so that you build a proper muscle memory and have the best and fastest results possible. Step two, horizontal centering. You will see a lot of aim guides saying to aim where the enemy can be, which is correct, but not the case every time. Sometimes you have to aim down on purpose or huh? even aim in the middle of nowhere. For example, I know the enemy is somewhere in this room and there is only one exit. So of course I'll aim at the only place he can come from, but that is rarely the case. Most of the times the enemy can come out from two or more spots. So you should aim at the center of these points so that whatever spot the enemy comes out from, you will have to do a minimal amount of aim correction. And if there are even more possible spots or it's not enough to see when I'm ADSing, I don't ADS so I can see everything around me more clearly. Just keep that in mind when you're watching a large area of the map. And now for aiming down. Although I said it's a bad habit to do so, which is still true, there are only two cases where you should do that just for a short time. The first case is in case your weapon is blocking off spots of important information. Where here, aiming like this blocks off this point. So I aim down just to make sure I'm able to see all the possible spots. The second case is when I reload. My weapon is blocking off important information from the right side. So I aim down while I'm reloading just to make sure that I see everything all the time. Practice this for 10 minutes a day in the same order without and then with bots or in plunder. And for controller players, practice all these drills without aim assist. This is crucial to develop the proper skill and even take bigger advantages of aim assist when you turn it back on. And now for step 3, corner centering. This is the exact technique that gets people accused of using wall hacks or how did he know he is there type of stuff. Thing is, you don't have to know. Now that you understand the importance of centering both vertically and horizontally, 
it's time to combine it with your movement. So when peeking around corners, make sure that your crosshair is as close to the corner as possible while you are moving around that corner. For this drill, I personally love using shipment because of its layout. So when I'm walking around a corner, I focus on moving my aim to the left when my body is moving to the right and vice versa. And when you add bots or start playing some close quarter fights in Warzone, you will see how you're gonna automatically have your sights on the enemy even though you didn't know they were there. Now practice this for 10 minutes a day. And now for the fourth and last part of centering, peeking one spot at a time. This is the easiest one. When centering around a corner, don't get too excited and overdo it. There will be times that the area you are peeking can have multiple spots that the enemy can be in. So peek one spot at a time to make sure that you are not being shot or seen by more than one person. To do that, you need to do a jiggle peek or what's also known as shoulder peeking, which is strafing to the right and left to peek just enough without overexposing yourself while getting the information of the area that you are looking at. I use this technique to make sure that I have enough cover and isolate my fights and it's very crucial for winning 1v2s, 3s and 4s later on. Practice this for around 5 minutes a day. In total, we have 30 minutes of practice just for centering, but do not feel overwhelmed. You don't have to practice for that long every single day and that goes for all of the exercises and skills in this guide. You just need to understand them first and start with one of these skills and as you become better and better, those 30 minutes will become 20 and then it will become 10 and at some point you might not even need to go into a multiplayer match or plunder you will be practicing centering just by thinking about it and realizing it while you're playing a public match and as the amount of time for centering becomes less and less needed you can start with a new exercise which is going to be recoil control or tracking or whatever you choose so for now start with centering and do not worry about anything else especially the settings you will see why in the next part of this guide so play hard and smart and i'll catch you guys in part two